Oh, sorry, I was typing in coolest dinosaurs on the internet. Welcome to Respawn Name Fire, the Kickass Reverend Gaming Podcast from Raffle Idiots. I'm one of your host, Adam. We'll talk about my favorite dinosaur in a minute, Gumbert. Oh, <laughs> <Today. laughs> okay, okay. And I've got with me Chad. Name your favorite dinosaur, Michael Ennis. You can't, you are not the boss of me. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Okay, true. I think, I think though, oh, I don't want to be a tool, and a tool would say Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. But, like, also, I think it's a Velocifucking-Raptor. Like, they're just too... I think it's a Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Yeah, we talked about this beforehand, that Jurassic Park colors real science. Because, you know, Jurassic Park was, like, fun movie monsters. Right, right, right. They even make a point of that. They're like, these aren't real dinosaurs, they're, they're theme park monsters. Right, I mean, but, I yeah, because they, they, blended, cool. they blended the DNA with the frogs and the lizards yeah, yeah. and the jello and the pudding and... Yeah. <laughs> I remember that jello scene. That jello is shaking as she's looking at the shadow. But yes. the velociraptors in real life were like turkey sized, like they were small. They were not these big six foot you know, killers. Right. Um, but in the movie, like uh, you would always say velociraptor because in the movie they're cool. So let's just say, including real dinosaurs and Jurassic Park, my favorite. Is the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. I love that guy. <laughs> nice, nice. That guy was so cool back in the day. That ringtone, whenever he ate that dude's phone. I guess he, he ate the dude. <laughs> okay. He didn't just eat his phone. That ringtone haunted me for years. Uh, the Pteranodons, though, in that movie were also pretty terrifying. Yeah, they tore that kid apart. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. I also don't know what the difference uh, between a Pteranodon and a Pterodactyl is. I think they changed Pterodactyls to Pterodons at a certain point. They just changed is the a, name of them. Is it a Pterodon instead of a Pteranodon? Hold on. Yeah. Like What's I think brontosaurus stopped being used oh, between pteranodon and pterodactyl in the real world, not the kind from Jurassic Park, because we've already primed our audience to know that one is fake. Uh, Pteranodon. Pteranodons are much larger than pterodactyls, and they do not have oh, okay. teeth compared to pterodactyl mm. teeth. Pterodactyls have teeth? Don't like that. Oh, it's my like God. It's like fish who have teeth. And what it's like, oh, why does do this fish have teeth? Pterodactyl teeth look like, are they sharp like an alligator or more like that episode of Sunny in Philadelphia where they glued human teeth to a bird beak for Charlie's dream journal realization? Let's see images they're sharp <laughs> they are they <laughs> there are a bunch of Nothing really about charlie day uh no there were definitely some video clips from that that popped up first but yeah I gotcha okay no. Woo, okay good to know yeah animal animals with teeth are scary uh catch us live on twitch.tv slash affable idiot sunday evenings at 8 30 eastern time youtube and podcast services tuesdays at 9 a.m eastern i'm coming out today's show we're talking a lot of dirty mouth, a lot of cussing because there's hype for Whoa. fighting games and for blood, blood games, games with blood all in them, you know. But first, another thing to cuss about. Finally, Sony fucking hell it's from Ryan Dinsdale at IGN.com. Sony has announced an hour long PlayStation showcase will take place next Tuesday on May 24th or this Tuesday. Or no, excuse me. This Wednesday. OK, OK, OK. May okay. 24th. Focusing on games coming to the PS5 and PSVR 2. Announced in a PlayStation blog post, the event will start at 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Sony promised to showcase games and development from top studios around the world and offered a glimpse at several new creations from PlayStation Studios alongside third-party and indie partners as well. So, fun idea for us. <laughs> We're not going to have a regular show next mm, week. Correct. Because we'll be recording Rap Pretty. It's Memorial Day weekend in America. That is correct. So we'll be recording Rap Pretty um, for Patreon that weekend. But we're going to do a reaction to the showcase that will go in place at the podcast, just for y'all to know. Yes. we here. Here's the caveat on that. It will not be a live reaction. So don't expect to log on to Twitch and be like, oh my god, I can't wait to see what they... It's going to be a delayed reaction because we're all working. But that evening, 
We're going to try to go as unspoiled as possible. And we're going to get on here and we're going to film our first React video. So there's like some tech side of it that we're just like, we're trying out. We, we've troubleshooted a little bit. We think it's going to work. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. A few hours delayed. We'll put that out as our episode. Uh, I guess we'll release that as as soon as we possibly can. So probably later that night or yeah. Thursday morning. Um, but then, yeah, that'll stand in the in for next week's podcast. But yeah, what do you think? Uh, you know, I reached out on Twitter to see what people's predictions are. We don't necessarily need to sit here and do predictions because maybe there's a segment that we're going to do something that's more fun than just guess what's going to happen. Oh, ooh, but okay. How do you feel about this news overall? And then I'll get into what people on Twitter predicted was going to happen. I am uh, I am pumped that we are getting out in front of Summer Game Fest and the other conferences by about two weeks because it allows it in our in our I don't want to say it in like a, a fanboy way, but like it lets us know what the bar is. Like we see Sony's, this is what we've got coming out. You know, I'm, I assume we're gonna see a lot of Spider-Man 2. I assume we're gonna see some some new IPs as well, maybe some new content. Uh and so it lets us know what are the types of announcements that other people have to do in order to live up to what we just set from Sony. So hopefully that and that allows us to get hyped a little bit more for what's coming two weeks later as well. I think it's just nice to have a start to the busy season, you know, because yeah. we'll get this. That's cool. We'll get a bunch of stuff here. Maybe some of that will go into Summer Game Fest. You know, Jeff Keighley will have a seven hour live stream. <laughs> we'll figure out what's <laughs> happening there. Move Not that yet. into Xbox. Maybe move that to another Nintendo Direct. But we're like in the season of cool stuff that's going to happen. Um, and then June like 21st and uh, 20th and 21st. One of our one of our friends is going to be on Kind of Funny Games Daily. That's pretty cool. That is correct. Yeah. So we've had her on the show. Jerrica Hanna from JK Games Podcast uh, is going to be in San Francisco on Kind of Funny Games Daily and apparently maybe some other content uh, on Kind of Funny for two days. So check that out. Tune into twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, I think is the one that they do yeah. on Twitch. Mm -hmm. June 20th, 21st. Lots of fun stuff coming up in the next month. But yeah, this is the first big one. I do... I did reach out on Twitter and said, "Hey, people, what do you think is going to happen? What do you? What would your random predictions be?" Um, and uh, keep talking. I got to go get my dogs. I threw it in in a place where he can't get to, and he's just going to whine. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I understand. No problem. First up, we have Audrey. Um, Audrey or a Watson twenty three on Twitter. Persona six, Beat Saber for PSVR two, and Corey Barlog's yes. next project? Question mark. Which could be, I, I heard you off in the distance. One of those things excited you. I'm assuming it's the second one. Beat Saber for PS... Not Beat Saber. That sounds like those Breath Saber mints. Mm. Uh, Beat Saber PSVR 2, baby. That alone would make the entire hour-long thing. Like, that's all they got to do. And you have an hour-long countdown screen. You know how they do? Where they're like, here's the event. And then they put the entire fucking countdown as part of the on-demand YouTube video. And you got to fast-forward 45 yeah, oh, minutes. Yeah, so annoying. So it's stupid. the worst. So they're going to do that, and then it's just like, tomorrow, Beat Saber, thank you for watching. I'm, like, I'm yeah. so glad I watched the whole thing. That's it. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, Persona 6 would be great. There's a little... Is it the, isn't it high fives, but everyone says it's praying hands? The emoji? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When everyone goes like like this. I mean, when I yeah. type thank you, this is what the keyboard su suggests. So like, I assume it's like yeah. a praying hands, or maybe like a Japanese bow. Who knows what it is? But That's yeah, what uh, it's a Audrey... high five. Yeah, it's stupid. That's what Audrey put after Persona 6, because that would be great. We won't, They won't talk about that game for another six years, and then it'll be out in two months after they announce it, or yeah. whatever weird stuff they're going to do. I would love it. You know what else? Like, it's I, also like, please, like I'm begging you, please, please. Please give me Persona 6. That'd be great. Um, Corey, I have heard rumors about um, Sony Santa Monica announcing or showing off what they're going to do next. That'd be cool, because um, Corey didn't do Ragnarok, or he right. wasn't the lead on Ragnarok. So right. he's he been told us he's else. been working on something else, and we know that it's not. Uh, we there might be some kind of spinoff from Ragnarok, but we know that it's not a third game in the series, because they're like, no, this is a two, this is a two for. So whatever Corey's working on, so, Sony Santa Monica tends to show things off a couple years early, so I think it's about time that we could at least see a teaser, or a title, or whatever it might be. Yeah, I assume like a title card would probably be about it. Like, there's no, I mean. You never know. But I would assume, you know, Ragnarok just coming out last year. They've probably been working on it, but I wouldn't think it's ready just yet. Over on my Twitter, where I retweeted it, um, 
I'm going to say it's Marcin. It's Markin? James it's Marsden? It's M-A-R-C-I-N. Oh, I think it's French. I think it's like Marcin or something like that. Yeah, it is French, I would assume. Uh, he said, Team Asobi show off a VR game, which would be, I'm assuming that would be Astrobot sequel or whatever it is, another yeah. project, um, which could be cool. Um, Insomniac will show only Spider-Man, not Wolverine. That's yeah, interesting. I could see that, yeah. I want to build um, hype for whatever's coming in a few months rather than diluting that a little bit. Yeah. Kojima will be there with MGS3 and Death Stranding 2. Maybe one of the... I oh, have heard I forgot someone Death else say this. Thing. Yeah. yeah, I forgot too because I don't care. Um, <laughs> so I could, I could see him maybe for Death Stranding 2. He has nothing. I'm telling you, he has not. I know he no. made that game. Konami and Kojima have nothing to do together. It doesn't matter. No. Um, Sucker Punch will show Ghost 2. I think that could be like the end teaser kind of a thing. Um, and GTA 6 will make an appearance and have Sony marketing. I'm going to say a big no for that one because Rockstar does literally whatever they want when they want and people will pay attention no matter. They could, they could send out a tweet at 4 a.m., that just like <laughs> was a color and people would be like, holy shit, it's, it's coming. It's coming now. And so yep. they don't have to, I don't think that, um, I don't think that this isn't just a Sony thing. I don't think that Jeff Keighley could get it. I don't think Xbox. Could get it. I don't think anybody could get a, a rock star announcement trailer. They do shit on their own terms because they literally can do whatever they want. You know? Well, maybe, maybe, I don't know, like bully remastered or something like that might be one of maybe these, something but like that. <laughs> GTA. No. Red Dead yeah. 3, no, no, no. No, nothing big like that. Um, but since we went through what some of the people out in the wilderness think, Chad, it's that time. Segment from Adam, a segment from Adam, segment from Adam, a segment from Adam. Can you name it? No, you probably can't name it. You're not a fucking nerd. That's the Pokemon Center theme from Pokemon Game Boy Games. Dun, 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 yep. That might be the road theme. Uh, so this week... We're going to do, instead of predictions, which we could do, but we've gotten some from the audience. Chad, I'm going to have, you got some money burning a hole in your pocket, oh don't my, you? Oh, oh, it's so hot on my thighs. Ouch. Did, so, did people tell you that as a, a turn of phrase when you were a yeah, kid? Yeah, burning a hole in your pocket. It really bothered me. Yeah. No one said that to me except for my dad. I'm like, what are you What are you saying? Money's burning a hole in your pocket. You got to get out of your pocket. You got to spend it on something immediately. Yeah, I understand that, but he's the only person who ever said that. So it's not no. common if you're the only one who says it. But you've heard know, of it, too, so yeah, maybe it I is common. It, I heard it a lot when I was growing up. Yeah, they're like, don't buy Pokemon cards burning a hole in your pocket. Anyways, <laughs> you have money in your pocket that's burning a hole. So this week, we're in it for Adam's segment, segment from Adam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. PlayStation Showcase over-unders. You're going to start betting that money, Chad. Ooh, okay, I have okay. 13 prompts, and you're going to tell me, you're going to basically bet so you know how betting works, like over unders, the lines. I'll explain it as we go. You yeah, understand yeah, how betting works. Why don't you works. recap it for me when it when it comes time? Well, depending, <laughs> most some of them are yes nos, most of them are over unders. Okay. So it would be like, how many um, Mountain Dews does Chad drink this episode? And I would put the over under at just like one. one and a half. Vegas would be like one and a half. It's just one. I got so Mountain Dew Zero Sugar, and I've got Jamie Lee Curtis Juice. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. But they would put the line at one and a half, and you would say, I either want to bet the under that he does one or less, with zero, or over he does two or more. That's why they're all halves, because you have to do over or below the number. Um, so this, right, this first one's a yes or no. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> Spider-Man 2 starts the show. So are you betting... What are you putting your money on? Starts the show, yes or no? You're going to lose cash if you lose, but you'll make some money if you get it right. No, it does not start the show. You don't. Where do you think it goes? Just off off topic. The these the and this is difficult because I'm starting to compare these to state of plays, which are different. This is a showcase. But I feel like in state of plays, the big thing goes at the end. Like the big deep dive or the big announcement or whatever it is goes at the end. And so that's where I'm thinking Spider-Man goes. Like, we, we'll okay, get an extended gameplay look at the end. Okay, interesting. All right, so, over-under. Right now, it's set at 5.01 minutes are spent on Spider-Man 2. So do you think it's more than 5.01 minutes or less than 5.01 minutes are spent on Spider-Man 2, mm, specifically? Mm, I'm going to say over. We know it's about over. an hour total. Yeah. 
So you say over more than five minutes. Yeah, they're gonna show what's new in the battle mechanics. They gotta know. They gotta show how the dual, like, how do you play Miles and how do you play Peter? How do you play Mm -hmm. Papa John? Yep, that guy. (laughs) It's a sizable chunk. I, I think. Yeah, with that being like the one big game from Sony this year, getting a good amount of time, I don't think is a crazy, crazy idea to have. Um, all right. 1.5. That's the line. On remaster slash remake announcements. And this can be from anybody. It doesn't have to be from Sony. So, 1.5 over under on remake slash remaster announcements. Because we've gotten... Does it announce- Part 1. We got Red... Uh, Re- was Resident Evil 4 a Sony one? Or was that game... Game whatever? I don't know. We'll um, figure it out. Do- does this include new looks at already announced remakes like if silent hill 2 shows up mm. i'll say new ones this new ones new i'm gonna go under i'm gonna go under one new one one new announcement on a remake remaster okay sounds sounds fair yeah i didn't even think about the ones that were already announced but uh that would count all right under for chad now that you actually reminded me of one that i didn't actually do uh <laughs> but we're gonna put this in here now over under on announcements from Konami at 1.5. Oh, oh yeah. No, we're going to have... Uh, again, does announcement mean new? Konami is showing off a game, 1.5. Over. So, okay. What do you think it's going to be? We're going to have something Metal Gear related, and we're going to have something... Uh, I think we're going to see some look at either Silent Hill or Castlevania. Yeah. yeah. Or the rumor might be like up to three. So, I think... We'll see, but you could end up I mean, up there, getting... there were, like, what, four Silent Hill games shown off? They had, the, yeah, uh, it was, like, two. Ago. Yeah, there was, there was a bunch that they showed off, or that they talked about. I think two remake, being a PS5 timed exclusive, would make the most sense, assuming they have anything new to say, because that was only yeah. a couple months ago. Maybe they don't. We'll see. All right, moving on to number four. 2.5 games shown from Square Enix. Mm. Over, under on that. Two and a half games from Square Enix. We're going to get something to remind us Final Fantasy is coming in a month. Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. And wait, what was the what was the line? 2.5. 2 for under. We're going under. Mm-hmm. We we might see Rebirth, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Okay. Now, again, not trying to influence this is your bet that you put in. We've got well, there is for spoken DLC. I don't know if they're going to want to bring it up and talk nope. about it. But then, <laughs> other other Square Enix projects as well. You know, they do other things. <laughs> I don't know. They sold, saying, they, they sold a lot of their other things. Yeah, that's true. They got rid of a lot of it. But in case they do like a, oh, fucking regalia under underscore redemption arc is coming to <laughs> ps5 that counts but now i'm with you i think for big games i think it's the two final fantasy games and then they sold everything off so yeah i'm with you i don't yeah. know what else they would talk about um they want to pretend if for spoken doesn't exist uh so 3.5 is the line psvr2 games shown non-sizzle reel so if there's just a scissor reel, like, here's a bunch of indies in PSVR 2, doesn't count. We're going over on and that. And it could just be like, this is a game that has PSVR 2. No, like, this is like this is the PSVR 2 section, 3.5 games. We're going over. We're going over. Ooh, PSVR 2 just came to third-party retailers, like, a last a week ago, two weeks ago. And so they, uh, they are trying to push units. Okay. Do you have any idea? Mm, Beat Saber seems like the big one. Beat Saber faux show. I don't know. We might we might see a new look at either Resident Evil 4 VR mode, since that's in, upcoming sometime this year. Um, again, there are still a lot of those like hundred games coming this year for P- or in development for PSVR two. Like a lot of those we haven't seen since that trailer a long time ago. So there's some stuff. There's some stuff. Okay, we'll see if it's four or more. All right, this is a two parter. First one is a yes or no. The last one is an over under. Last of Us factions dated. No, not shown, but dated. Nope. You say no. All right. It's kind of pointless for the second part, but I said the second, <laughs> the date is two nine twenty four. It's just a Friday in 
February. I wanted to give it a good amount of time in case. Well, you, I guess you would have to say the over because you would I'm not say, it comes yeah, out over. before then. Over. Or you could hedge your bets and say it does come out before that, <laughs> but then we don't get but a release date. Yeah, I, no, yeah. I, I, it's over. I don't think I don't think we're going to see that for a while. Yeah, I'm curious because they said we're going to talk more next year, but what does that even mean? That could be like, hey, we're working on it. It'll be out at the end of next year, maybe. We'll just throw up a – and then when I say date, like I'm not talking about just like a year. I'm talking about like a date, like yeah. a day you can take off work for. All right. <laughs> to Adam Chagrin, Knights of the Old Republic update. <laughs> no, you're talking about the remake, right? Yep, the remake no. from Aspire who got taken off of the project and given to somebody else. Nope. Yeah, they don't want to show that again game. until they are ready to show, hey, remember last time we made that mistake in giving it to Aspire? We corrected it. Look at all this brand new cool stuff that we've developed, and it has not it has not been long enough time for that. Yeah. Um, I would say, because I know, was that part of Embracer? Or, I know there's that big group that owns a bunch of stuff. Dead Island 2, recently, apparently has been very good, and everyone yeah. really liked it. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. You, it seems like you got a hit on your hands. Let's keep doing that direction instead of what Aspire was trying to do. Uh, Wolverine, over under 31 seconds worth of trailer here. I'm so gonna Under. I'm going to say under. I don't know if we're going to see it at all. Because you don't think it's going to be there at all. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I think that if we do see anything, it'll be a teaser trailer. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to see it because Insomniac was like literally like, hey, here's three games and they all come out in the next 18 months. Like they literally did that at the beginning. But uh, I'm hoping to see more. I'm hoping to get like a full blown like Wolverine comes out next year and here's everything about it. But uh, we will see. Thank you very much. I okay. am hoping. I'm not hoping. I just I I actually I don't know whether I'd lose my mind in a good way or a bad way or whether I want them to be separate. But like if we see Wolverine at all, I'm thinking maybe it's in a Spider-Man 2 trailer. Like, we see Miles and Peter flying around the city, blah, 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 beating up bad guys. And then you just, mm -hmm. like, see a shot of Wolverine in a doorway or something like that. And he whips out hey, his claws. Bub. And they're like, oh, hey, bud. What's going And then, boom, you see them about to fight each other. And you realize, it's a shared universe. Ah! Yeah, it's a crossover. That'd yep. be cool. Uh, all right. Kojima sighting. Yes or no? Do we see? Now, again, this could mean Death Stranding 2 could be shown off. But if we don't see Kojima's face... That, that's what matters no. in this prediction. No, no Kojima's, Kojima's got I mean, like, if he shows up anywhere else but Jeff Keighley's thing in two weeks later, like, Jeff Keighley's going to get butt hurt, and Kojima's yeah. going to have a lot. Like, he's going to be in the doghouse. <laughs> he's like, hey, dude, you're in trouble. We're yeah. not friends anymore. Uh, all right, this one is interesting. Marvel games shown two and a half. Oh, uh, Marvel games... Now, this is a little... After you've answered some of the Wolverine stuff, you don't think it's showing up, so this seems less likely. But we have Spider-Man, which was for sure. Yeah. A Wolverine, which is a maybe. And then there's the Amy Heading game, as well as any other possible new announcements. Well, we it's also just know there's thinking. an Iron Man game in development. And we know there's Iron Man. We know there's a couple of things. So that's that's why the line's at two and a half, to make it tricky. But if you don't believe I'm gonna say, it... I'm going to say under. It. We're going under. Okay. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, maybe we see... Maybe we see Amy or the Iron Man game, but Midnight Suns doesn't have anything left coming out. No. Wolverine, I don't think we're going to see. Yeah, no. luckily we don't live in a world where Avengers DLC is still coming out. Yeah. <laughs> so it can screw you over <laughs> yeah. or whatever. All right. One and a half is the line. Games announced to launch into the extra super special tier. I always forget what <laughs> tier gets the games day one. But 1.5 more games announced to launch into that service. Oh, to launch into that service. Uh, like Stray yeah. style or Humanity style, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, Stray, Stray and Humanity style. Uh, I'm going to say over. You think we're going to get more? I think we're going to get mm. two. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I remember at the beginning of this year, I made a bet that I thought that there would... I don't remember the number. I have to go back and listen. But I was like, there won't be more than three. Because last year we literally got one, yeah. which was Stray and nothing else. This year we've gotten Chia and we got Humanity. Oh, so I we're at about two. Chia. Yeah, that's right. So they seem like, I mean, they're, they've doubled their output from last year. So <laughs> let's right. see if they keep it 100%. going. 100% growth. <laughs> For sure. All right. Point 0.5. This is a low one, but that's why it's so tantalizing for the betters out there. Point 0.5 over under PC game announcements. That means games coming to PC, whatever have you. 
Does the I'm specifically so this thinking means like PlayStation like, games going to PC? But but are you thinking like, hey, we've got this infamous remaster coming to PlayStation Five, and then also coming to PC? Like, is that the does that count, or is it specifically like? We've got these games coming to PC next year, blah, blah, blah. Like, is it is it specifically pushing PC or just like it is a platform that it's also launching on? No, it is a... Well, there was a story earlier, so I didn't... It's not super important, but like Jim Ryan's like, we're not going to launch P- PS5 and PC day one. It's like, unless it's necessary and we feel like doing it, I'm sure, which is what he really means by that thing. But no, the idea is that, that P- PlayStation games coming to PC. So right. it could be a rematch. If they say PlayStation and PC, that would count. If they're talking about just PC, like this old game's coming to PC, that counts. No, yeah, this PlayStation is a, games on PC. We're going under on for. this one. I feel like if so something's zero. coming, if they're pushing PC, that's a state of play thing, not a showcase thing. Showcase thing is okay. what's this brand new cool thing that makes you want to own a PlayStation Five? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, and my last one before I added the Konami one or in the beginning of the of the game, Ghost Two ends the show. Yes or no? No. Because I already said Spider-Man would, so. (laughs) Yeah. Can't go back on yourself. All right. So, I have recorded all of your answers. Thank you. And whenever we do the showcase, I'll be able to look it over and do all the the calculations. And we'll see how much money you owe me. (laughs) Oh, that's right. This is all about money. Oh, it's burning a hole still. Mm -mm, Mm-mm. burning a hole. There we go. So, that's the way we're going to do our predictions. Just like, Chad's going to bet. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> What's the that's consequence? It. Do I have to paint my face like a Muppet again? No, that's only for fun <laughs> stuff. This is, if you don't pay it, some goons from the Mafia come and break your legs. Oh, sweet. Yeah. From, from the, the Foot Clan? Can we make it the Foot Clan? Sure. I love I love nice. ninjas who smoke cigarettes. Yeah. Remember that in the first movie? They were like teenagers. They're like, we're going to rebel and smoke cigarettes. And I don't remember that. Ninjas. But Go back and watch the first Ninja Turtles movie with the weird puppet. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 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 The bad, the bad guys are a bunch of kids who join the Foot Clan gang and smoke cigarettes in an arcade. They're like, we're cool as fuck. That's what right. happens in that movie. <laughs> yep. That was a fun little way to do that. Thank you. Very cool. All right. Uh, now we're going to move on to playtime. We're talking about playtime. Adam's got a cake in front of him. <gasps> Chad, you go first. You'll care, cake. Um, speaking of humanity, I played that this week. Actually, today. I played it today. There was... Um, it's free on the PlayStation Extra or Premium tier. So if you have like whatever's not base PlayStation Plus, then you have access to it. And it's out on PS4, PS5, PSVR 1, and PSVR 2. And I was like, man, it's been a long time since I've used my PSVR 2. Let me boot that up and see what this is like. This is a very well-made game, Adam. It is, uh, I'm sure you've probably deduced this from the trailer, but it's like, it's puzzles where you are a little tiny dog that runs all over these little floating puzzle worlds. You can kind of, they kind of look like a Monument Valley style worlds or like a, almost like a Toad, Captain Toad treasure tracker kind of thing, where it's like just these floating worlds and you got to figure out the puzzle of how do you get... Diorama. Yeah, a diorama, a 3D diorama. You got to get all these people from door to the finish line. Like, how do you get them there? Using commands, you're a little puppy running around, so you bark to let them know to turn left, or you bark to let them know to jump, or high jump, or whatever it is, as they kind of move all over the place. And of course, there are all sorts of collectibles in there too, you gotta get these little gold guys, there are, if you like hit these hidden switches that you can find along there, you can branch your level, like secret level in Mario almost, where you get a secret exit, and then that takes you to Star World, or whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, very well made game. It's super fun. I like that you're playing as a, l- a little dog. And then in, I played in VR mode specifically, and it's just always I'm just I don't know why I don't play VR more. Like every time I play, it's like God, this is just so cool. You're looking at a little diorama. You're like in this god mode, looking down on this little model, and you can rotate it around and you can move your head around and see all the different parts of the puzzle, which is really cool. Um, and it kind of kind of. Uh, not Echo Chrome. What was the... It's a little... Okay, here's what it is. It's a little bit of a mix of Monument Valley slash Captain Toad. And um, there's a game that launched on PS3 called... Oh, it's one where you're like a little dude who's leading people through a zombie apocalypse on like a Google Maps thing from Studio Japan. The Last what? Guy. It was called The Last Guy. The and Last I, Guy? Yes. And it was like a downloadable game from Studio Japan early in the PS3 cycle. And it was, yeah, it was Google Maps things. And you were just like, you're collecting people on the map. 
and you're basically yeah. the leader and they follow your path kind of like centipede style yeah and then you have to get them this, to the exit and save them <laughs> this mobile ass looking game on the <laughs> ps3 downloadable game yeah that sounds pretty cool though it literally but, used google earth stuff to make yeah. the maps okay uh so yeah the game is really fun really cool it is uh puzzles i don't love puzzles and man, those puzzles get real tricky and break your brain real easy. Like, I went through the whole like five or six level prologue, and on the second level of the first stage, I was like, I don't know how the fuck to do this one. I spent about five minutes trying to figure it out. I was like, I don't know how the fuck to do this. I won't play this game anymore. But if you are the kind of person who like was balls deep in the witness and you're loving puzzle games, like you're gonna really, really like humanity. I think it reviewed pretty well. Um, yeah. I didn't look everywhere, but I know on IGN it got a 9. So everyone seems to be enjoying it. And I'm pretty sure it's from the Tetris Effect people, right? Which I love. I think that's Tetris right, yeah. Effect. I also hate Tetris. Um, I love that game, though. It's very pretty. Um, Tetris is great. But yeah, no, it's good to hear that it's good. And it came into extra super special tier. So that's right. it's nice to actually get that's stuff right. out of those tiers besides it was Toy Story for the PS2. You know, <laughs> That's very cool. Adam, I kind of like it because I liked Lemmings back in the day. But go ahead. I also played nothing else but Tears of the Kingdom this week. And I wish the Nintendo Switch were better about telling you how much you've played. But it does that like coy little thing where you go into the settings and it's like, it just describes them in weird ways. Like this game you played a little bit. This game, You've been playing for a while. Yeah, you've been playing for a while. <laughs> You've played, and all it tells me right now for this one is like, the, you first played it eight days ago. I was like, that's not useful information. Um, but I would guess maybe 20 or 30 hours. And that's a lot for me, especially for a game that I didn't think I was going to like at all. And that I picked up mostly just because I felt I had an obligation to as a gamer and a person who talks about games. And then I've, I have frickin', I've been hooked and I am into this game so hard, Adam. The mysteries that are there. Here's what, here's, we talked, like, my reactions to the gameplay and stuff like that last time. Mm -hmm. But here's what's hooking me. The, there are these memories that were in Breath of the Wild. Apparently they were a thing that I never found, maybe even a single one of them in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> But uh, they are much more obvious here. You're just like falling from the sky and you can see like weird patterns all over the ground. You can see, oh, there's a pattern of a sword on the hill way over here. Let me fly as far as I can and try to get to that pattern. And there's a memory associated with it. And there's like 11 of those. And these memories, Adam, are so freaking cool. I'm not going to spoil any of the story that's through them. But that's those are what's keeping me exploring. So my, exp my exploration is just to find Skyview Towers so I can shoot myself up to the sky so that I can find memories. And then I find a memory, I watch like a two or three minute cutscene about some really badass shit going on with Zelda and some people. And uh, Ganondorf, the Demon King. And I'm having a, having a great time discovering those. I found like six, I think, of the 11 memories. And then I'm also mostly sticking to the main story. Because here's the thing, Skyview Islands are boring and barren as hell. They're like, mm -hmm. everyone's talking, oh my God, you you can't only do Hyrule now, you can do the Sky Islands. I was like, yeah, but they're all just like a bunch of old ruins and like maybe you find a robot up there you can kill and like a treasure chest. And then the treasure yeah. chest is like, here's a sword that you're going to like for three minutes until it breaks. And it's like, cool. Um, and then, yeah, there are cool puzzles and not puzzles, but like trash you can put together and make a cool bird wing cool thing, trash. <laughs> cool trash that you can glue together and you can fly through the sky until that breaks or falls apart or you lose it. Um, so yeah, I'm not really into like exploring, exploring, and that's why I think I'm liking this a lot better. And, um, yeah, I'm sticking to the main story. I've done now two of the four temples. Ooh. And holy crap, they are so good. The temples are really, really good. There are bosses of these temples that, like, if you're familiar with basically any Zelda game, you're going to be familiar with the bosses. But, of course, they are in brand new, awesome, mind-blowing, cool, badass ways. Um, I'm just having a great time with it. And I can't wait to go back Love and play hear. more as soon as this is done. And, and I can hop off and play more Tears of the Kingdom after I watch Succession. There you go. Because historically, as someone who didn't like Breath of the Wild... Both of us. Yep. I think that, especially because as you've been explaining over the years, the whole open world, there's just a bunch of shit to do. 
like doesn't seem to like hold your attention for a long time, if for a little bit, yeah. but eventually you get tired of it. So I like that this in Breath of the Wild, people can argue all they want. There's not much story or direction in that video game. There's yeah. a little bit, but there's not much. But this actually having more pointed story, and then you can ignore the exploration, I think is a big boon. Just for people like you. I mean, a lot of people like exploring and doing open world stuff, but for someone like you who are like, did not like Breath of the Wild, but now it's like, oh, here's a story to go along with the big world. Yep. I think that, that sounds like a good thing. So I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Two questions. You said Ganon is the Demon King. Is he a better king than the Pumpkin King, which we talked <laughs> about in this? This is Halloween. We talked about that last week. He is certainly uh, more powerful than Jack Skellington, for sure. Okay. Very good. And would you, it's early. Well, it's not early. Fuck, it's almost June. Game of the year? Oh, uh, this is, is my game of the year game? so far. Chad's game of the year? This is my Ooh, game of the year. So I don't expect this to last as my game of the year. Because again, like in two weeks, we have Diablo 4. And then like two weeks after that, we have Final Fantasy 16, which looks incredible. So I don't expect this to last as my game of the year. But right now, it is definitely my number one. And you think you're going to beat it? Beat the story? Oh, yeah. I can't wait to. Very cool. Yeah, it's Look fantastic. You, character growth. I'm also <laughs> I think I think also what what I like about this and what's keeping me in, in this is they acknowledge they acknowledge that a lot of it's the same map from from Breath of the Wild and I think it's easier to traverse because in, in Breath of the Wild you had the towers but it's mostly you climb up to the tower, it does the Assassin's Creed thing where it opens up the map a little bit and then you jump down from the tower. But you can't really go that far from the tower. In these, obviously, you shoot way up into the sky so that you might potentially come across the sky islands. And that allows me to basically, I can shoot up in the sky, I can see a tower in the distance, and I can almost make it from tower to tower to then open up another part of that. So, like, exploration is so much faster than it was in Breath of the Wild for me. And by exploration, I just mean, like, I need to get to this point and I don't want to walk through the woods and fight a bunch of stupid bokoblins to get there. That's what I mean by exploration. Speaking of which, Adam, one thing I hate about this thing, and this might have been the way in the first game, but I don't remember. Two things around, two things related to horses. <laughs> one of them. Oh, here we go. Here we go. One of them. There's a, a, a fun little Easter egg where if you have played Breath of the Wild and you have save data on your system, the first time you go to a, a stable, they're like, oh, it seems like you already have a few horses boarded here. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take them out instead of having to find new horses. And I open up. I was like, oh, that's fun. That's interesting. That's cool. I clicked to open it up to see what it was. Of course, there's a Pona in there. And then past me gave me such a good present because I had two horses named Butthole and Penises. <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking lost it. I had to put my switch on the bed beside me and just laugh for a good 30 minutes. Anyway. Um, so yeah, horses there, but also the shitty thing about the way horses are, this is not a Witcher 3 horse scenario. This is not a Ghost of Tsushima horse scenario. This is a, you have to take your horse out from the stable and then you have to return the horse to the stable if you ever want to see it again, because your horse does not just come to you from like, you cannot just summon it in midair. You cannot be across the map, whistle for it and it comes to you. Uh, it has to be nearby in order to hear the whistle. And if you forget to put that horse back at the stable and you go to another stable to take it out again, it's like, oh, nope, this horse is already out somewhere. You can't take it out. And in a game where you are constantly warping around or shooting up in a Skyview Tower and f exploring off 5,000 miles in a different direction, like, that's bad. I don't want to fucking touch a horse in this game anymore. Yeah, I just don't want to use horses at that point. No, like it. <laughs> no, it's a pain in the ass. So, uh, horses suck. That's it. So yeah, playing like Tears of the Kingdom, loving it a lot. Very cool, very cool. All right, me. I just played some more Midnight Suns again, going through the new game plus with all the new characters. Uh, pretty fun time uh, doing all that. Um, and the, but then I did play something new. I've had this game bought for fucking two years. I don't know. It's been a while. It's been sitting on my PC desktop. Mm. Like you know what. Let me open it up just because I was looking at my PC desktop and I was like, fuck, I need to play that video game. I started Disco Elysium, uh, which oh, was okay. a much beloved game from a couple years ago. It's the ultimate whatever edition. Um, I think this is what they did when they brought it to console. Um, and it's like fully voice acted and all that stuff that was in the original game and cleaned up a bit. It's really cool. It's really weird. Man, it is 
the game, I, I don't know what's going on yet because I'm very I'm only like an hour in or so. But I'm like, fuck, this is this is that weird shit that I'm into. It's like, yeah. hey, what if like David Lynch made a video game about a cop who fucking did drugs? It's like, all right, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, again, I'm very early on in that. But I was like, fuck, this is good. Just like the story is so good. All the acting is good. Have they told um, you yet in the game like why that guy's nose is so red? He he pointed it out. It's so funny at the very beginning. Like you wake, it's weird. It starts out like it literally has like the, it's like all like the text on the right side of the screen, and it says like reptilian brain, and it's like your psyche has different personalities that talk to you, but it's kind of like so you know like Sherlock. Like, I mean nowadays you'd probably say he's on the spectrum or he has some kind of thing, but that's why he was so good at solving mysteries because he his brain thought in a different way. Um. And it's, I feel it's like, it's like that. It's like, you're good at being a detective because you got this weird, like your psyches are, are directly connected to your body. So your brain thinks different and you're able to process information differently and shit. It's fucking weird. Again, it's fucking weird shit. But, um, the game like, oh, reptilian brain or whatever is like, wakes you up out of oblivion. Like you're blacked out drunk and then he wakes up. That's the game starts like, oh, I don't know anything. I don't remember my name. I don't know where I am. I don't know what's going on. And your psyche and you're trying to figure out what's going on as well as solve a murder. But you go into the bathroom at the very beginning of the game after getting dressed from being naked and have vomit all over yourself. <laughs> and you, it's like you start to wipe the mirror and it's like, be fucking careful. You sure you want to do this? And like the voice that comes in who sounds like Idris Elba is like, I don't know if you want to do that, buddy. Are you sure? There might be a monster on the other side. And you're like, fuck it. And you finally do it and you wipe the mirror off and you look at your <laughs> And they do like a SpongeBob zoom in, like fucked up. <laughs> Where it's like but super it's high like, detail and gross. Yeah, but it's just, and then it puts your face in the bottom left corner because before it's a smudge. But mm -hmm. it's just like he's got a big bulbous nose. It's like he says that his skin is floating with alcohol. Like <laughs> he's so bloated, there's alcohol under his skin. He's just like a fucked up caricature. So I think you asked about his nose. Yeah. I don't remember what you asked. But it's fucked. <laughs> he is a fucking <laughs> mess of a human being. Uh, and they make a point to point out that, like, yes, this dude does not look right. And it's it's weird and heady, but it's cool as fuck. I'm trying That's to start out this crime. So, yeah, good stuff. Keep playing that. That's it for me, though. Speaking of people being drunk and bulbous noses, goddamn, it's Mortal Kombat, y'all, from <laughs> RyanDinsdale at IGN.com. All those characters with the big noses in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Warner Brothers Games and NetherRealm Studios have officially uh, uh, revealed that a reboot... That was very good. Oh, also, by the way, I saw Fast X. Man, I can, I'm happy to get two more of these movies. Oh, Let's go. That movie is a mess. It is wild, but it's fun. It is They're a like, big mess. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I did not like it in the way that I usually like my dumb Fast mm. and Furious movies way. Like, I like I, it more than nine. I checked my watch probably 20 times. Just be like, how much more? How much more? Yeah. Okay. But they're definitely like, okay, Empire Strikes Back, we're setting up everyone is here. Like, that's yeah. the movie is everyone is here, the Fast and Furious, the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's a good time. Um, but anyway, what I was talking about? Mortal Kombat. One will arrive November 19th for PS5, Xbox Series, September. Nintendo Switch, and PC. I think mean, you said November. That's what I said. Nope, September. That's what I said. Relax. <laughs> I have no idea what I said. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 is the latest title in the acclaimed Mortal Kombat video game franchise developed by award-winning NetherRealm Studios. Reads a post on the website. The game will introduce uh, a reborn Mortal Kombat universe that has been created by Fire God Liu Kang, featuring reimagined versions of iconic characters as they've never uh, been seen before, along with a new fighting system, game modes, bone cru crushing has a K, bone crushing finishing moves, and more. Um, a beta will also take place in August for those who pre-order any version of the game on PS5 and Xbox Series. While post-launch, NetherRealm will add crossplay and cross progression. So we, before we get to the leaks, again. We had the rumors about this. They finally showed off the trailer. And I love how they just like, I hope you played the game, the last game. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Like, you're, the trailer just starts and it's like, I'm fire god Liu Kang. And you're like, fucking who? <laughs> Liu <laughs> Kang's a god now? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and the trailer is awesome. It's really cool. Mood piece. And then fucking Shang Tsung just murders fucking 10 people really, really badly. And then he gets destroyed. And it's like, yeah, I just like the idea that basically Liu Kang became a god. Created a new uh, reality, and it's just like restarting Mortal Kombat 
like the story over in his image, like the way that he wants to do it. So if you watch the trailer, it's pretty cool. I thank God that you had talked a little bit about it last week because that was all the context I had going into the trailer because I do not keep up with Mortal Kombat lore. And I was like, oh, this is what Adam was talking about, where like somebody went back in time and and is like doing Mortal Kombat 1 again. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I kind of get it, but I still don't know who all these people are. I know Scorpion. I know Ice Sub Zero. <laughs> Sub Zero. I know there's a green one named Lizard that we didn't see. No, we might not get him. Um, but you know, it's cool. Basically resetting it, but there's a story. Well, resetting, there's an alternate dimension that Fire God Liu Kang has. And he just, I love at the end of the trailer, no spoilers, it's fucking trailer, where he throws out the dragons and yeah. he holds Shang Tsung's arms and then he punches his head through his body. Yeah, punches his head down ground. and splits his body in half using the guy's head. It's like, holy hell, man, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, very exciting. September, again, people have said it, this year's got all the fighting games, especially if Tekken 8 comes out this year, because mm. we got Street Fighter next month, this in September, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, yeah, this... I was, uh, I was, I'm okay. not, I'm not a fighting game, like I don't buy fighting games because I'm not good at fighting games. I feel like I can't get my money's worth out of fighting games, uh, but I will play them occasionally when they're free. But I, I, I shared this in the group thread with Matt and Dallas and Brent. And Matt and I agreed. Yeah, group, my, group, oh, this group is our text. secret di Discord, but we do it offline yeah. in an iMessage. Um, so, yeah, we shared it, and Matt and I agreed. This is like, this looks really cool. I will never be able to pull off these fatalities or cool last moves, and like, I just want to see this in another movie instead. Like, I want another Mortal Kombat movie similar to what we got during the pandemic, mm -hmm. with just all this cool shit happening again. Like, that's what I want. Now, I didn't put in this story, but there apparently is a new fighting system. So, Street Fighter did a similar thing where there's, like, a an easy mode. Basically, they're like, we know that fighting games have been around for 20 years, and it's the same controls, and it's confusing. So, apparently, I don't know, I haven't played it, of course, but they're supposed to be controls for, like, do you know how to play Smash Brothers? It's like, I don't, again, I'm just saying that I don't know if that's the fact, but they're, they're supposed to be simplified controls for people who aren't good at fighting I games. Did see, and I, I did see a GIF on Twitter, and I think it was from somebody, like, official associated with the game, where it had, like old way and then it showed the button combos to do the move and then it said new way and then it showed what buttons they were pressing to do it but the new way looked no. just as complicated as the old way to me so like i didn't quite follow what they were doing maybe so but i will say this is what i've always done because i don't i'm not a fighting game guy either i used to i kind of got over it um i love to buy mortal kombat like the ultimate edition on a sale like six months later so because i just played the story mode mm -hmm. same thing with injustice love the story mode the story modes are literally i'm not getting it, fantastic so get it when it's like half price and you get all the dlc and everything for like 25 30 bucks like it's definitely worth it because those just put it on easy and go enjoy the story modes they're cool mainly brian does um, confirm in the chat street fighter does have simpler controls available yeah and I now that, that mainly they... Brian's here, now that I know that you're here, uh, I saved this for you. I'm at the bottom, Brian, of my Jamie Lee Curtis juice, which has Miralax in it and Benefiber for those smooth, Ugh. squishy poops. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> yeah. Why are you doing that? That's I have disgusting. To, I have to because here's a fun fact. Hemorrhoids aren't a joke, y'all. I got a hemi. Yeah. I got a hemi any, and uh, I'm going in on Friday, no, Thursday, and the doctor's going to put a little thing up my butt and then go, poop. And then it wraps a little rubber band around the hemorrhoid, and then a few days later, it suffocates and falls off out my butthole. Do they fall off? Yeah, they do. You can do, apparently you can do the same thing with your finger. T wrap a rubber band tight enough, and well, if you yeah, wait long that. enough, it'll just fall off. That's how you kill yourself. Yeah, but or destroy it. your body. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so now I have to drink this, make my poo off, so it doesn't knock the rubber bands off. Oof, ouchie, my poopy. God, I love you, Brian, so much. Oof, <laughs> ouchie, my poopy. That's great. Uh, that's a that's a secret Discord joke that you wouldn't get, Chad. Oh, uh, no, DLC... I got it. I got it. Anything uh -huh. poopy, I know. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> DLC fighters have leaked. We also talked about this last week, uh, last week, but we might have more information. So according to our product listing on uh, Amazon Italy, there are six playable characters and five cameo characters in Mortal Kombat Pack 1, or Combat Pack 1. Um the six playable characters are said to be Quan Chi, Omni Man from Invincible, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ermac, Peacemaker from James Gunn Peacemaker, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, Takata, mm -hmm. and Homelander from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Boys. Like on their Amazon uh, show. Yep. <laughs> yep. Packaged with them are apparently five cameo characters, NPC fighters that assist a player during the match. The cameo, the cameo characters listed in the leak are Tremor, Johnny Cage, Chameleon, Movado, and Farah. So, okay, so when I Google 
Takeda, T A K E D A. I get a pharmaceutical company. Better health, brighter future. <laughs> Papa John's. Uh, and then there's oncology. Who mm -hmm. who is Takeda? Because I know it's not some pharmaceutical rep going to be in this game. You can just type in Takeda Mortal Kombat and something. I'm sure it's an old Mortal. I don't remember all the characters. I'm sure that they've come up before. Takeda Takahashi. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an old Mortal Kombat character. Okay, yeah. Origin Earth there you Realm. Go. Okay, That's so I was thinking do. it was from a third party thing like the rest of these were. No, no. They Mortal Kombat loves to be like, here's there's like here's six characters. Three of them are guests and three of them are old Mortal Kombat characters. Okay, That's okay, what they okay, love okay, to do. Okay. So they they seem to follow a similar path here. Um so yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. Like I said, I'll get that on sale probably because I'm just gonna play story mode, but it looks really cool. And let, let Nether Realm keep doing their thing because they, they do make quality products. Last story of the day, new Dead by Daylight games from who is this? Is he back? Oh, oh, is it our boy George Yang? George Yang at GameSpot. Here he is. Behavior Interactive revealed that it's expanding the Dead by Daylight franchise by creating two new games in its universe. One is a narrative-driven game, while the other is a multiplayer one. I'll talk about the multiplayer one first because we don't care. I don't say we don't care. Chad doesn't care about it. I don't care about it. The single player I do care about. Uh, the multiplayer one will be developed by Midwinter Entertainment, best mode for the multiplayer survival game Scavengers. Um, the version, uh, the vision for the game that they're making in Dead by Daylight is a PVE experience where instead of players facing off uh, each other, up to four players team up and enter one of the entity's realms and fight off enemies. Enemies Could be cool. It's always fun to team up and fight that weird uh, big... What do they call that? Have you ever played Dead by Daylight? I did, yeah. We played it for a few game nights with our patrons back in the day. And it was fun. I did feel like yeah, it was fun. heavily weighted towards the serial killer, whoever you chose as the killer. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, it was what fun is time. That, you know when they hook you and then that thing comes and like stabs you and takes you in the sky? I'm assuming that's the entity. Whenever you lose as a human player. But what is the name of like... You see, like, insects have them, where it's, like, a curved... A it's not a mandible. No. It's, like, the bends in their weird little hands and feet. What's the name of the bends that are sharp on insects that can hurt you, and they're kind of like scythes, but Adam says they are different? Uh, thread-legged bug came up. These are true bugs. <laughs> Whatever awesome. that means. Love it. I know it's not mandibles because that's the thing on their mouth. Uh, but anyways, that's the multiplayer game. The one that I'm interested in, the narrative single-player game, will be headed by Supermassive Games, best known for developing Until Dawn, The Quarry, <laughs> and Dark Pillars <laughs> Anthology. The Quarry! Uh, this is all, um, from Supermassive, uh, Games uh, executive producer Tracy Tufty, Tuft. We've been working hard to uh, hard to blunt the attention, agency, and branching storytelling of a super massive game together with Dead by Daylight's mythology to create an intense narrative experience filled with powerful life or death choices. So again, Dead by Daylight's fun. It's a cool multiplayer game. It's been around for a while. Pretty popular, but them teaming up with Super Massive to make like, hey, let's bring in. That guy from Jurassic Park and P Detective Pikachu, and he's going to get killed by that big claw monster from the sky. What's his name? Justice. Justice something. Justice Smith. Continue. I'm just, I'm just still looking up Praying Mantis Blade Arms. <laughs> you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited to see whatever famous, like, lower A minus tier actor they bring in. To get killed by the the monsters in Dead by Daylight, I think that'll yeah, be a yeah, really yeah, fun yeah, time. Yeah. It's really difficult to search for this and not just get a bunch of search results about Scyther and Scissor from Pokemon. Yeah, you shouldn't have put that in there. Oh, well, I, yeah. I even I even typed in Scythe arm on bugs called. <laughs> it just brought a bunch of Scyther, and now I put Praying Mantis arm on bugs called. <laughs> Don't worry about it. People who play Dead Light Dead, Dead by Daylight know that thing that comes and kills them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Would you 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 like Supermassive? Is this exciting to you at all or no? I do. Yeah, I like I like I like some things that Supermassive does. I enjoyed Until Dawn. I really like the Quarry, and uh, the Quarry. Um, and yeah, the Dark Pictures are hit or miss for me, but uh, I'm excited for them to do something. Dead by Daylight is such like a weird. It's weird to call that an IP. 
because it is just like it's just a bunch of fucking every serial killer in the whole world that's ever been in a movie or is here to kill you, including now Nicolas Cage. Um, yeah, I don't uh, know if he's a killer. He might just be a playable character. Oh, he okay. could be a killer, okay. I guess. <laughs> I, he might. Maybe it's Renfield. Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'll I'll probably play it if it's like part of the PlayStation Super Special Extra tier. Gotcha. Very cool. Uh, that's all the stories for today. Sorry, I've been eating cake this entire time. Don't apologize. If I've been sounding like I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm distracted by the chocolate with the vanilla buttercream. That's good. That's good. We already did a segment from Adam, right? Which means it's time for Game on Game Show. The game on our game show, we play a game called Game on the Game Show. On our game show, game, 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 game. We are playing MCU at the Elite Four. Get it? I mash up like CU at the Elite Four and the MCU because this is a game about making Pokemon teams out of MCU characters, Adam. So um, the way that this works, I, I, just, I thought it would be fun for us to basically just draft MCU characters to be in our Pokemon team as we go against the Elite Four. Right. Here, here are the ground rules. We're going to go one by one. So you pick, I pick, et cetera, et cetera. We can't pick the same person. We're going to assume all of these are legendary Pokemon. So those only exist like once per instance of the world in traditional Pokemon style. So, and we're not acknowledging the multiverse. Um, so we're going to pick and in order to like have a lowest common denominator with our audience, we're going to stick just to MCU characters. So nothing from comic books that hasn't been shown in a movie or a TV show yet. And then just for tips and tricks, remember we're going off against the elite four, which includes four people and your rival. And it's a good idea to have a mix of people uh, and see who becomes the very best. Like no one ever was. I need my dragon type to take on Lance. So, so yeah, here's the other thing. So, we also, when you pick someone, we have to figure, we have to decide, like, hey, what, what type of Pokemon would they be? And, yes, Lance does have dragon Pokemon. Uh, dragons are weak against other dragons. But, basically, that it in that yeah. game, the only dragon types you really have a choice of are um, Gyarados Dragonite, right? and Dragonite, right? And Gyarados yeah. is, is basically... Is, Actually, Gyarados might just be flying water. He might not even be dragon type, In but he does have dragon breath. Yeah. And you can spray dragon breath, which they're weak against, but you don't have double the damage because if their type matches the move type, then that makes it twice as effective. Mm. So it's really not even worth bringing dragon type because you know Dragonite also has dragon moves and he's just going to wreck you if you're a dragon yeah. type. So you might as well bring other things. Dratini sounds like Martini. Exactly. Here's the trick, though. Dragonite's also flying. Bring Articuno, fucking ice his ass. Because flying are weak against ice, and Articuno is the trick to all of the Elite Four. True story. Anyway, that's our that's our game today. We're going to figure out our, our MCU. So, you get six people total. You just gotta, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pick them, figure out what their types are, have a good time. So, Adam, you get first pick of anyone that's debuted already in the MCU. Who would be your, your number one pick? Doctor Strange. Ooh, Doctor Strange. Okay, okay. And what type yeah. do you think Doctor Strange is? Uh, fuck. I, were there fairies in the first game? There are fairies. Uh, not in the first game. But, I mean, Elite Four is in basically all the games almost. Yeah, he'd be fairy type. Magic type? There's a magic type of Pokemon, right? Is it just there fairies? Is, there is no about? magic. There is fairy. There's okay. also psychic. Yeah. There's also dark. So I think those are he'd like have magic-ish types, I guess. He'd be fairy, I would assume. Okay. Yeah. Doctor you can Strange, also, if you it. wanted to, this is a thing in Pokemon, you can dual type. So you can have a primary yeah. and secondary type too. Fairy normal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, oh shit. I, so I'm probably going to pick, and the recency bias is on the brain, I'm going to pick Rocket Raccoon. And I have no fucking clue what type he would be because I have not thought about that until right now. Is he steel type? Because he's got a bunch of metal in him. You're right. He's got a bunch of metal. He like mm -hmm. makes a bunch of shit. So, uh, I'm gonna say steel Animal. fighting. Steel fighting. Fighting makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. He's a rambunctious little guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. That works. Okay. I'm going to go for, I did strange. We're going to go ahead and go for, boop, 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 boop. I'm going for Thor. I got to take my boy Chris. Ooh, okay. Place. Okay. Um, and he would be lightning flying. Nice. Okay. 
and and also bicep. He's bicep type. Yeah, he's just so strong. He's just a big strong boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I want like a like a I break the game really good Pokemon. Like when you go after you beat the Elite Four, you go to the Unknown Dungeon, you get Mewtwo, and then you come back and just wipe them with Mewtwo. Like that's what I want. And I'm thinking that for me is either going to be no, I'm gonna. It's gonna be Captain Marvel. I'm gonna go Captain Marvel. I was about to say, if you don't take Captain Marvel, I'm taking her next. Yeah, I'm taking Captain Marvel. She absolutely breaks the game. Um, she's going to be what type of? She? She's got a lot of cosmic powers. I don't know what that would be in the game, though. I feel like, like she would have things like she like hyper beam and swift. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so uh, those are all normal type moves. So she's gonna be normal flying. Normal flying. There you go. Yeah, that works. Uh I'm trying to think. Do I want to go to left field? No, I'll do that next. Well, I, I'm not going to play around. I'm taking the Hulk. Okay. Okay. I mean, he he is the strongest there is. Yep. And uh, Mark Ruffalo is a fun actor. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> Hulk is, I mean, what, ground ground fighting probably? Oh, yeah, definitely ground. has got that earthquake and all that shit in there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Earth fighting, yeah. And he's just, he's so he's so powerful. So, he's kind of, a, uh, that is kind of a cheat too. That's why they literally turn him into a dude for the last Avengers movie. He's like, he's yeah. just a guy now because he's too strong. So for sure. Um, cool, 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 cool. I need someone fiery. Who do we got? This fiery a fire person. Mm. God, I was gonna say, well, you can't do Human Torch because that's not in the MCU yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um. Here's what to... I want. Here's what I want. Okay. Who's the Who's the girl in the multiverse of madness who opens up portals to everything? America. America Chavez. America Chavez. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. America Chavez. Open up portals to other timelines and shit. Can go hide. It's, you know those like the good moves in Pokemon are like dig or fly when you like get the fuck yeah, out of the way and then their attack you. misses and then you're like surprise. That's what I want. All right. And she's gonna like be. That. She's definitely gonna be. I feel like that requires is that psychic maybe some kind of psychic manipulation there no. yeah sure yeah psychic she's psychic. she feels like an abracadabra knockoff yeah 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 all right that works uh next up i'm gonna go happy hogan um <laughs> john favreau's okay. character okay um I, I guess he's just normal right he's just a normal man but all he's got the moves that like do all the weird buffs and debuffs and stuff you know the stuff yeah. that's important for like league play but that normal little kids are like it doesn't do damage i don't care about this move that's what happy hogan slash john favreau does okay and what type again normal as fuck and just normal i'm gonna follow in your shoes and i'm gonna say agent colson oh here's why he's gonna be a ghost type he's gonna be normal ghost <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't he's dead, watch huh? that show. I watched a few episodes of that show, but not enough to know why the fuck he's still alive in that show. Um, so yeah, he's going to be normal slash ghost. Okay. How many do I have so far? If I think that's four for each of us. So this is our fifth. We got okay. two more. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to choose. I forget his name. It starts with the T or something. But Ben Mendelsohn as the scroll because he's just Ditto. Oh yeah. So I got okay. Ditto in my in my party. So when you go against the dragons, Ditto becomes a dragon. There's mm-hmm. the dragon moves. Mm-hmm. Boom. I think um, his name's Talon. I might be wrong. I'm going to go with Loki. Oh, that's such a good one. Yeah, I was thinking about Loki. that too. He's going to be dark. Mm. I I feel like dark psychic. I chose I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I chose him because I was trying to think of an ice person, and I know he's part ice giant, but also he's not really icy. But now that I've picked him, he's like no, he's definitely like dark slash psychic. He has that ice box in the first Thor movie. But he, he's uses. dark psychic though. Okay, I mean yeah. you can do whatever you want. No one's gonna stop you. No, that's it. Okay, okay one more, one more. I'm getting into steel. Fucking Spider Man. Come on, Chad. What are we oh, doing shit. here? Tom Holland's Spider-Man. He's going to be in Bug? There is a Bug type, isn't there? Yeah, there's Bug type. Scyther. Praying Mantis. Yep. And Mandible. there he is. <laughs> Those little weird little legs. Um, bug and... Mm, I think just Bug is fine, because he's a Spider-Man. Okay. I like it. Okay. Um, my last Actually, one. you know what? Yeah. You know what? Because I can be stupid here, 
I want Spider-Man Far From Home, Andrew Garfield. Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. Andrew Garfield Spider-Man is who I want. He's still bug type, but I want Andrew Garfield specifically. Perfect. Uh, my last one will be Adam Warlock. Mm -hmm. Adam Warlock. Super strong, a big old doofus. Big dummy. A big old dummy. <laughs> he's going to be the one where, like, I don't have the high enough trainer badge in order to control him. And, like, every once in a while, he's just going to be loafing around and won't pay attention to what I want him to do. Yeah. But, man, when he hits, that Pokemon's dead. Yeah, immediately. Yep. Kind of scary, actually. But then yep. he's a big doofus, so it's not too bad. Just, love like, <laughs> random aside, no big spoilers, because they do it in a lot of movies. But I love how Nebula's like mostly robot, so they can just fuck her up. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hilarious. Maybe Adam Warlock just fucking like breaks her neck and pulls her in half at one point, and it's like she just <laughs> comes back together. But it's pretty wild. Oh man! All right, that's it. That's our elite four. So mine was Rocket, Captain Marvel, uh, Agent Coulson, Loki, Adam Warlock. Oh fuck! Who is my other one? I'm gonna be honest, you, with Chad. I almost I forgot mine. Most of mine is fine. there. You go, excellent. So uh, <laughs> because great. I remembered five of mine, I win. And that's okay, it for you. Game on Game Show. That is it for episode three hundred and nine. Uh, three hundred is that right? Yeah, three hundred and nine. Uh, respawn aim fire. Oh, everyone, you have homework. Just fucking do it. And listen, you're only gonna have homework for a few years of your life, and then that's it. And then you just have regular work to do. And yeah, then you go in the real world. Take and it that sucks home ass. Too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so do your homework now. And then that homework is to go to patreon.com slash respawn aim fire. Watch our first raft pretty, which again, amazing. It is exclusive to patreon.com slash respawn aim fire until June 1st. After which, a new version of raft pretty with two more special guests. Uh, we are recording that next Monday. So we will have that available to you for the month of June. And everyone else will get raft pretty. Uh, delayed. So you get exclusive access for at least a month each time. You also get to vote on Barf games with higher weight than everyone else on Twitter. And Barf is our backlog accomplishment with Respawn and Friends game where we all choose what old or classic or short or whatever the fuck game that we should have played are we going to play. And you all voted and you all tied. So we're playing Minute. M-I-N-I-T for the month of May. It is a one and a half to two hour game. A four hour platinum trophy. So get that done. We'll record that probably the first week of June. So make sure that you've got that done. You got your your thoughts on the game to us, or if you want to be on the show and talk about minute, excelente. That is totally. I know okay. someone who. I don't know if they want to show up, but I know they have thoughts. So we'll at awesome. least get an email from one person for cool, sure. Cool, 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 cool. And we'll make Alex responsible for making sure we remember to read emails since he sent us so many emails, and maybe thirty percent of the time we read them in a timely manner. Don't say we. That was a you error. That was, was a me. That was a me error. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, there's another piece of homework. I know it. I know it. But I can't remember it. So we're going to let it slide. You no, we got showcase reaction. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Barf. Wednesday. Showcase reaction. Yeah. We're going to be doing this live on Twitch. So Wednesday, if you're watching this, the day that this comes out, which is Tuesday, tomorrow evening, we're going to be doing... Uh, live slash delayed reaction to the PlayStation Showcase. All three of us on the screen with the thing playing magical. So we're going to be doing that. And then, of course, we'll release that as next weekend's episode. Is that it now? I think so. I think you're good. Thanks, Brian, for coming in and saying oof, ouchie, my poopy. <laughs> All right, everyone. Until next time, here's our usual sign off. Ooch, ouchie, my poopy. I imagine it said with that accent. Ooch, ouchie. Oof, ouchie, my poopy. <laughs>